things which are friendly. It's Torley Linden here. I'm back to fulfill a popular request because you see I get asked a lot of questions about when am I going to do more video tutorials concerning scripting. Well, I want to share this really easy tool if you've never ever scripted before and Enigma has created this auto script generator. It's right here at 3greeneggs.com forward slash auto script. It's pretty easy to get to and it's really fast and facile. What kind of word is that? To use. So it creates the, the main benefit of it for me anyway. You can select what you want your scripted object to do to make it interactive and you can set it in context. So let's start with a really simple example. And that would be if you want an object to load a web page. Say you have a box you want someone to click. You can just click on this radio button and then this comes up. As you select different ones, different options will come up. So you could put in an address like Second Life, whoop, single word, dot com. And the title, of course, is Second Life. And you can set the conditional here. What's really valuable about, the, about this, particularly if you've never scripted, is you can look at the script because it's fully permissive and you can reverse engineer it. You can modify it to make it better. So, and you, of course, you can learn from it. Let's select as soon as, uh, I mean, when an avatar touches your object. Voila, make my script, and it's right here. And what you do with this, it's very simple. You just select, just drag and select all that, or edit menu and select all. And then you can go ahead and copy that. Just a standard copy. So one thing I should also mention is and does have some great written instructions. They're very neatly presented for slash how to HTML right there. They're linked to from the bottom of each auto generated script page and also from her blog. So if you need written instructions, check this out. But if you've never done this before, never put a script in an object, here's how it happens. So we're in second life, right? Mm. We will right click on a piece of land that we can build on, make sure it's buildable. There's no no build icon on top. There'll be a little cube with uh, this little red slash circle. And click create and click on the ground. Under the content tab, now new script, of course. You don't have to name it. We could rename it like load Earl to make it more descriptive and double click it to edit it. So now what we can do, we can take the contents of this and we can just delete that and we can go ahead, edit menu and paste in or from here as well. That will work. And of course, there it is. It's color code, uh, coded for syntactic readfulness and readability, pardon. <laughs> and then we can save that. It's compiling, let it go. And let's close that out. And now you notice when I click on this, it now has the, the changes the cursor indicating, yes, it's interactive, you can touch it. And of course, it will load secondlife.com. Appropriately enough, we can go to the page and it's going to do exactly that. All right, so we've got that down pat, right? Wonderful. Let's look at a slightly more difficult example now. This requires a little more work. I re recommend trying any of these out based on your needs. Like, for example, here's another popular one. Give something to an avatar. Say you want a note card giver script. Well, this will do that for you. You can click that, and of course, this part changes. So you want to give, say, change that to note card. And instead of when an avatar touches, you can change that to, let's say, when an avatar is nearby. So like someone flies into the welcome zone of your land parcel or something like that. Make sure it's not too spammy, though. Test these things. OK. So you can check this. Uh, I would check this off, because I actually want to repeat that to make sure it works repeatedly. And let's make the script then. So it's very nice, just very clean. More people should know about this tool. It's actually been around since 2007, but I'm helping to get the word out about it because it just makes your scripting and getting started with scripting a lot, lot simpler. Again, select, and of course, I'll just control C this time. Keyboard shortcuts, wonderful. You know me, right? And back into Second Life. And then let's make a new cube. Right click and create. Of course, it doesn't have to be a cube. You can drop this into an object with the permissions uh, to modify that you can do. 
this is just an example. So let's see, give note card. And double click that again. And let's just delete that. And once again, so now notice the script is a little more, uh, um, is a little longer. And of course, the sensor that detects. If you look these up, I recommend going to wiki.secondlife.com. We have a Linden scripting language portal where you can learn more about these various scripting calls and the vari variables and other sorts of parameters which you're going to need to advance your scripting life in Second Life. But for now, it's pretty straightforward. These two forward slashes, this indicates a comment in orange. So having clean, beautiful code that is well annotated helps explain to the next person. This is really good if you're sharing, say, scripts with friends and you want to explain this is what it does. There is no excuse to have sloppy code when you can make something very nice like this. All right, so it's going to give uh, the note card, as it says, inventory note card. So it's going to save ahead here. It's complete. Let's close that out. And now let's drop a note card into here. OK, because it gives us a scripting error. Why? Because, oh, no item named. That's a problem. It's going to keep repeating that until such time that we put a note card in. So let's go to create and new note. It'll appear in the note card folder here. And then you can say, like, give me, you may notice I'm, an, I'm a, a watermelon avatar, oh, kind of like Little Shop of Horrors. And so feed me, I'm like, give me. So if you were giving out, like, rules and instructions and blah de blah de blah whatever you want, you put it in there, you save it. And, of course, if you want to not make it modifiable, this is another request I often hear about, right-click and properties, and the next owner should be able to modify it. If it's like really strict rules, you don't want someone tinkering with. Otherwise, of course, you can leave it full permissions. Let's close that though. And let's click and drag it and release here. And now the scripting error should go away shortly. The next time it up, oh, it auto gives it to us, right? So let's quickly close that and let's fly off. Oh, it's doing it again. See, so you can get very spammy. So that's why normally you'd want to keep that give one time. Because what it will do, it will keep the avatars' uh, names in memory. And it's not going to repeatedly spam someone. Because spam is bad. But now when we creep towards it, say we're flying towards someone's welcome zone, right? And then we're going to stay here. And then it will suddenly give us this note card. So when you want to stop a script, say it goes out of control. Oh, oh <laughs> it's going out of control. Right click, edit, and quickly in content, open up the script and turn off running. Then it will stop it. And then it will cease to function. Turn it back on if you want to make it run again. Okie all righty. Well, we're starting with a clean slate. And if you haven't noticed this already, this is really nice. If you speak French or German and English is not your native tongue, you can localize this script generator into the language you're most comfortable with. I wonder if more languages are yet to come. It's pretty cool, though. So in this example, which is even slightly more difficult than the last one, we're going to combine not just one, not just two, but three functions into a single script. And you might be going, how do you do that? Because you can only click one radio button at a time. Well, this is an intro to elementary script modification or modding if you've never done it before. It's simpler than you think it is, believe me. So we landed on change in object's color, the object's color rather, and that's a cool one to go with. It's going to involve sight, motion, and how about a sound as well? So first things first, let's have it change to green. And let's set the trigger to be something we haven't tried before, when someone says something. And let's make it so if I say cat, then it'll change the color of the object. Make the script, and you know, Control A to select all, Control C to copy. We can do that quicker now, we're smoother. And back into Second Life, right click, create a new cube, ba da 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 da. Content, new script, and let's name this one just Mautai because it has it have three purposes. Double click it, and let's control A to select it, control V to paste over it, and then let's save it, or control S to save it. And then, okay, this is where the color is set. These are color vectors. Zero means nothing, one means full value. So if you think in terms of RGB, one is like 255. So if we want to mix the color up, we can make this 0 0.5. So red, green, blue, it'll be r green but tinted with a shade kind of blue, so it kind of getting towards the cyanish direction. 
Let's save that again. And then let's head back into the script generator. Now this is where it gets really interesting. I know it was interesting before, but this is even more interesting because back we're going to add the ability to play a sound and then move around. So uh, now let's leave that off for now. No sound spam. Someone says something, leave that the same and make script. Now how do you combine them? The key is to look for what is different and additively copy that in, copy and paste that in, which is this line, play sound, right? Because the last one didn't have anything to do with sound. Control C to copy it, kind of like William Shatner. <laughs> Price line. No, I'm not advertising that. And then you can click here and just make a enter a couple times, blank line, Control V to paste it. And notice also that there is syntactic checking. So if you miss out one character like a typo and you try to save it, it'll tell you there's a problem and where it is right here where the I-beam is flashing. Let's add that semicolon back and let's save that. And then back into the script, auto script. And one more time for move around. And that sounds pretty cool. Leave it how it is, one meters up and make my script. And what was different right here, you see that? This set pause or set position line. Copy that. And let's go back into second life. And let's just go ahead. The line and set pause and let's save that. On a related note here, this means one meter on the Z axis or going up. So if you want to make this move higher, you can do two, three, four, whatever and change these as well. Feel free to experiment with that. We're almost there, but we still have to add a sound. This can easily be achieved if you go to inventory and in my inventory, if you have any sounds in there like I do, if you don't, you're not out of luck. Remember, you can go to File Menu and Upload Sound. It can be a WAV file up to 10 seconds. But if you don't want to mess with that, let's head to the library. And then in the library, let's go to Sounds Folder and Gesture Sounds, because there's a whole bunch in there. Ooh, fart. Good gosh. Uh, yeah, let's see, 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 see. Ah, Soundtrack. That sounds fun. I remember these. Keep in mind that make sure sound is turned on at a good volume and it's not muted and double click. The first time you play a sound during the session, it will take a little while because it needs to load. It's not cached. It. There we go. Oh, that's all right. Kind of Hitchcockian. That's even more suspenseful. Ah. So let's click and drag that into there. And we are ready. We are ready. Close, close. We are ready. OK, let's zoom in, get some perspective on here. So it's going to emanate the sound and the motion from the cube, sight, sound, motion. OK, ready? And if this chat bar isn't open, click the dialog bubble to enable it. C, A, T, ignore the background sounds. Launch phase, enter. Again. Again. And we have ignition. <laughs> you can quickly discover all the possibilities of this one at a time or two at a time or even three at a time exploring your own scripted creativity. Like it emphasizes, add interactive elements to your builds. That's a great strength of it. And even if you don't know how to code at first, you will learn naturally this way. The big problem I find often with scripting is there are mental hurdles. It's not as difficult to get into as you might think. But some people are like, oh, it's going to involve a lot of, you know, all these complicated thingies. But if you begin with a tool like this and then begin decompiling, I mean, looking at the scripts literally and changing little parameters, tweaking here and there, you'll gain a natural appreciation and organic learning for it. And I really hope you enjoy this. This is a wonderful, wonderful tool. And again, I need to emphasize that's why I'm getting the word out about it, just because it's so fantastic and easy to use. I wish there were more resources like this, but whenever there is, I think, wow, this can make life a lot easier for you, your second life. <laughs> anyway, you know how I am. I love to see what you come up with. Please do share your scripts and creativity with me. And of course, let Anne Enigma, the creator, know. Thanks to her for providing this resource. This has been Torley Linden helping you get started scripting with Autoscript. <laughs>